Greetings to one and all. This is Dr. Narayan from Open Fan Innovation Labs, Bangalore. Today, I will be discussing a very interesting uh, project which we have recently done using artificial neural networks for analyzing financial data. In this project, it involves feature engineering, neural network creation, and strategy backtesting. The code for this has already been uploaded in my GitHub library, which you can easily download uh, and practice on your own for educational purposes. All of you would have heard about artificial neural networks. We are today trying to understand how artificial neural networks can be used for analyzing financial data, how to model the data and how to have a better risk reward ratio and better strategy and better returns using this uh, neural networks for our financial analytics. So this involves may have, uh, many stages. Part one, we'll find out about how do you train neural networks. In this, first I'm importing pandas, matplotlib and seaborn. Okay, then for this example, we have taken a mid-cap stock, Kajaria Ceramics, which is a listed stock in National Stock Exchange. And I have taken a two-year data just for educational purposes from 4th May 2023 to 2nd May 2025. As per CB guidelines for educational purposes, we are required to use three-month-old chart for educational purposes. That is why the date is ended with 2nd May 2000. 25. So you uh, now we are just finding out what are the observations and the variables. The number of observations here are 491 and number of variables are 5. What are the variables? Uh, that is your date, price, which is closing price of the date, high, low, open and volume and 491 observations of the same for a period of 2 years. That is the number of trading dates we have had for the uh, for those period of two years including the holidays now before we do feature engineering feature selection is very important criteria this you can do as per your requirement or as per your understanding of the uh, technical analysis so in this i have used standard deviation from the range of 5 to 20 in the steps of 5 Moving average is which is a very commonly used uh, indicator in the range of 10 to 30 in the steps of 5 and the percentage change from 3 to 12 in the steps of 3 and the intraday movement which I call as CO that is nothing but the data of uh, close minus data open that is closing price minus opening price for that particular day. And if it is positive, it is a positive moment. If it is negative, it is negative. So if I go through the feature list, if I just give a command of feature list in the Anaconda, I will get standard deviation 5, 10, 15. That is this one, 5, 10, 15, 20, because we are going in the steps of 5. If you want to do 5 from 50, you can just change it accordingly. You can increase the step size here as per your requirement. So if you type the feature list, we'll get standard deviation 5, standard deviation 10, standard deviation 15, moving average 10, 15, 20, 25, percentage change 3, 6, 9. Because any percentage change above 3 is taken as significant than the intraday movement. In addition to the above, we use the popular technical indicators to build features, which are Bollinger Band moving average convergence divergence and parabolic stop and reverse all this you can go through in the wikipedia to understand what are this most of the technical analysts in financial field know about bollinger bands moving average convergence divergence and parabolic stop and reverse okay then we will import a library known as talib as ta and we use the ILOC indicator um, function here uh, to find out the upper band of the uh, MACD, middle band of the MACD, lower band of the MACD. And 
the ml algorithms don't work with nan values however while creating the above feature we would have many nan values so you have to remove this nan values from the data set this is your modified feature list after considering macd so your previous feature list only had up to co now we are also using uh, upper band of the uh, bollinger band middle band of the bollinger band lower band of the bollinger band a uh, moving average convergence uh, divergence and your uh, sar indicator that is your parabolic stop and reverse indicator so these are the feature list uh, now if you just uh, find out the head of the feature list for all this feature list you will find lot of nan values now this will hamper our computation and the program will not work therefore you have to drop this drop non in this nan value so i use the command data drop uh, data dot drop nan so after you are dropping the nan values you get all the numerical values we'll use only technical indicators and quantitative features for this exercise we define the matrix x and create a target variable and assign it to a target vector y now you import numpy as np x will uh, all the feature list is put into v uh, x and the target is put into y and uh, data dot target np where data close my shift one, minus one y shift minus one that is the previous trace close if it is above the present day close it is taken as one otherwise if the previous day's close is lesser than the present uh, if it is not greater than the present day's close that is it is lesser than the present day's close the value has taken as minus 1 and that is put into your target then most importantly we we'll use the train underscore test split function from sk learn model selection package to split our data set we will use 20 percent of our entire data set as the test data set and the remaining as the training data set now this 20 percent is uh, most widely used if you are having any other value you can use that this is generally adopted and this is for educational purposes therefore we have taken the standard practice so from sk learn model dot selection i am importing train test split data set extreme x test uh, training data, test data, target training data, test data. Uh, so your test data set is 20. So your training data set will obviously be 80. So this is the shape of the data set between the X train, X test, Y train and Y test. Before we can train our neural networks, we need to make sure that our data is scaled because all the data you cannot take that is the ranges between 0 to 1. We use the standard scalar from the sklearn.preprocessing package. We need to train the scalar object on training data only and then apply on the training and testing set both. From sklearn preprocessing the import standard scalar. So from the scalar, we are scaling the uh, data. This is the value from 0 to uh, onwards. We have scaled the data. This is the maximum value. This helps us to better train the neural network model. So we have everything ready now. Now it is the time to create the first neural networks. We use the MLP classifier from sklearn.neural uh, network package where MLP stands for multi-layer perceptron model. A simple neural networks have an input layer, hidden layer and the output layer. The input layer has the various variables. You have the hidden layer. You can have multiple hidden layers for more complex operations such as image processing or uh, more complex uh, operations in neural networks are there. But in this, we have only one hidden layer uh, only for this. And this is the input layer where you have all the variables. So as we have just discussed, we have an input layer, hidden layer and the output layer <clears throat> and please note that in scikit-learn library we need not specify the size of the input and the output layer it will be fixed by the library itself okay so now i am importing from the scikit-learn neural network 
I am importing MLP classifier from this library. I am importing this MLP classifier. So from the MLP classifier, the hidden layer sizes uh, is 5 and maximum iteration is 300. And the activation function I have defined as tan h. You can define various activation function for this uh, tan h uh, activation function worked very well. And this maximum iteration, you have to be careful. If you give too much size of this maximum iteration, it will not converge to a particular value and uh, your system will uh, keep on processing and it depends upon your system hardware architecture and the processor speed and the ram requirements so don't over strain your system so in this it worked well with maximum iteration 300 start with 100 and then uh, i suggest you increase that iteration size the number of uh, network layers is three that is the input layer hidden layer and the output layer in this case so these are the model parameters activation function batch size all these things uh, it is listing it out these are the weights between the input and the hidden layer because from here these activation functions will carry based upon the weights so those weights are being printed here. So between the input and the hidden layer and the biases which are between the input and the hidden layer, okay? So these are the weights and this is the biases. Okay, then this is the, our model accuracy on the training data set. Uh, we have got an accuracy of 58%. That is quite good in predicting whether the next day close will be higher than today's close. Uh, any uh, accuracy which is above 50% is found wonderful in trading community. So this accuracy of 58, although not fantastic, it is quite good. And uh, the model accuracy on the testing data is around 61%. Uh, you have to multiply this into 100. So it is almost 62%, 61.95. So this is the final prediction. One means the next day close will be higher than the pre uh, previous day's close. So minus one will be next day close will be lower than the uh, present day close or the returns will be negative as we already discussed earlier. So this is the Y predicted. So all the predicted things will go into this array. As training and the testing accuracy are very similar, we can consider the model that may not have overfitted and it may generalize well. However, it is difficult to claim until we evaluate the model properly. So we calculate what is known as the precision and recall. So I don't have the time here to explain in detail precision and recall. Uh, so uh, we have a separate, uh, what to say, class on financial analytics as a course. We do this where all this is dealt in detail. So precision, we get a 61% and recall, we get a 62%. And uh, this is for backtesting our prediction. So I'm just backtesting for the same uh, feature selections we are taking, moving average, standard deviation, MACD, other things. So this is the back-tested results. Now what this chart signifies is these two plots. One is this buy and hold strategy. If you have just bought the stock and holding it, you would have ended literally with a negative returns of 45%. That is uh, because it has given a negative uh, returns. This is the cumulative returns. Cumulative returns means each day the returns are added cumulatively. And if you go by this neural network strategy returns, uh, you can see up to October 2024, hardly any difference between that. After that, your strategy return, that is buying, selling, buying, selling, or uh, using some, some kind of swing trading strategy based upon this neural network has given an excellent return. Now, this is only for this period. You need to backtest for a larger data set and for various scripts to understand how efficiently this code is running. This particular uh, video I have just done for demonstration purposes. And as I already told you, the script is available in our in our GitHub library, which you can download. My GitHub library is there. A link shall be provided for the same. You can download and practice on the other scripts. 
by changing the feature list or the mm, script or the parameters or however the way you want you can uh, modify this code so strategy returns has given an excellent return over a period of time as compared to just buy and hold returns as uh, when you are employing this artificial neural networks this is the only thing i wish to convey in this video by using this artificial neural network uh, strategy thank you very much for your patient uh, hearing we also have a dedicated four month course where we deal in detail with the financial analytics starting from the basics of python all the libraries to the uh, basic to the midterm to the advanced intermediate to the advanced all the python libraries which are used for financial analytics will be taught to you will be hand-holded and you will be understanding what is this entire quant finance how the technologies such as machine learning and neural networks can be used for analyzing financial data as there is a big domain of financial engineering where engineering graduates are people who are uh, want to use technology for finance how they can leverage these things effectively so we have a separate course on that that is not a trading course but to understand the uh, concept behind using these strategies for analyzing the financial data thank you very much for a patient hearing I wish you a wonderful day ahead this is dr narayan signing off from open fund innovation labs bangalore thank you